Hey, what's going on? Man, oh man, oh man. You set the trap, they take the bait. <laughs> and um, I knew they would come. See, a lot of times the guilty, when you holler, they come. But if you notice, and I'm talking about the B-A-I-O and all their affiliates, they're all the same. They try to use tricks to make you think that they're all separate. But I'm about to prove something in a minute. Uh, at least by the time I do this, we'll see if they took it down. But I'm going to give a screenshot to show you a little something. <clears throat> now, on my uh, video, the last one with the B about the BAIO with the infrastructure and the land and all that kind of bullshit. Whole lip sism responded. But if you notice, con artists, they like to focus on things that I either did not focus on or they like to focus on things that do not directly deal with the issues raised. So he left the comment basically uh, pointing towards my GoFundMe and laughing, I guess, at the minuscule amount. See, here's the funny part. They act like they're not for donations, even though their donations state nothing. And they also state that they don't accept donations. But I'm about to prove that to be a lie in a second. Here's the funny part. When you have a small amount of donations, now keep in mind the GoFundMe page was giving me some problems. You know, now, I, you know, maybe I could start believing other people when they say it, it has given them problems too, because uh, that seems to happen. That's why I encourage people to go to the Go GoFundMe link, read the description. People will keep wondering, why do you want the 57000 If you read the description, you'll see why. And you'll see that it'll take a whole lot more than 57000 That's number one. But we need something to work with. And uh, you go there, you read the description. Then you donate with the Google Pay. And uh, Google Pay, you get 100% of the donation. Nobody takes anything. So anyways, these guys, they point to the GoFundMe. And he laughs. It's a typical nigga reaction because that's what that's what it's all about. YouTube hits, YouTube likes, and how, who gets the most money? See, with me, it's about what do you do with that money? That's what it's about with me. Now, if I would have gotten enough to, let's say, get $20,000 and waste it on a, upgrading a car that's already nice, that's what you call nigga shit. I mean, why even give somebody money? It goes to show that they're totally irresponsible. And they don't give a damn about what they preach. They don't plan on doing a damn thing for black people. So what do they need money for? To keep bringing you the information? The information about what? Bullshit. All these red, black, and green. When you see red, black, and green run. You know, I'm glad somebody put up some video too about the Marcus Garvey Jr. I forgot. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but... I don't even know if it's been confirmed that he was Marcus Garvey Jr., but that's his, that's what he called himself. Because, you know, in the red, black, and green community, there are tons of current artists out there. So you can't even believe people when, when they give you your name. So he was out there. How come people didn't get behind him? You know? So it's funny. They point out the money. Which goes to show that that's their prime interest. And they avoided the issue. See, they thought, or they wanted people to believe. They also issued a video response. I, I assume it's a part of a larger uh, response. It was about 20 minutes. And they didn't mention my name, of course, but they mentioned practically everything else directly. Except, of course, the charges I, I levied against them. They didn't want to mention that. <laughs> and that's 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 how you can tell when people are full of shit, man. They they stay away from the main issue, 
and they want to divert and get into everything else but the main issue. So they kept talking about the money. They want to joke on my GoFundMe campaign and say, oh, well, this guy is asking for a GoFundMe. The BAIO, we don't ask for donations. Okay, let, let, let's say you don't. But you take them and watch. And you definitely take them individually and watch as I put this up. And I will be putting up these screen captures because I'm doing this separately. So, But I looked before I decided to make this video because I'm on the road. So I looked before that. Just to see. And I said, God damn, these guys are hypocrites. I said, damn, you're going to lie at least, you know, try to cover up the lie, modify the lie or something. I mean, God damn. But this just proves that these people are full of shit to the fullest. And this is what I mean. I'm going to try and hunt down the video, too, where this whole lip schism or ism, schism, these guys with these dumb ass names, Angel Snup Nup 7, whole lip schism. Man, this come with some simple shit. So, I know somebody's going to say, oh, you see, they're taking a shot. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, these complicated ass names, man. I mean, come on. So, anyways, I looked. These guys are accepting donations. And their excuse will be, it's not officially from the BAIO. We have no leader. But I listened to their clap back if you want to say and of course what I got out of it was this is their main mantra they want land to build an independent black state in Africa for African diaspora and then they said that's, that's their concept that's their vision that's their only agenda right now. Then they're worried about the details of it later on. That is not in dispute because that's what that guy said. So, again, there's already a country called Liberia that fits the bill that was set up by the white man. So, again, when you deal with these kinds of people, I keep telling you, these kinds of people, they, they, they go for impossible dreams, impossible missions, impossible goals, so they can get people to support them and give them money, and then they can never accomplish the goal. This is what these guys are doing. This is what people who talk about taking over a state, this is what they do. And then they develop beasts with other individuals, so they can have an excuse to stagnate. And somebody else is going to do what you claim that you wanted to do. What's the problem? Oh, you just want to defend it because uh, you like homosexuals. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm taking a shot. But um, and I'm, I just took a sip, too, for people who just, <laughs> you know, how it is, man. Some people just hear what they want to hear. I, I, I just don't understand. It's like you're in the car with somebody and the two of you are having a conversation and you're going back and forth, but somebody, they can still hear the music playing, even though the music is low. That goes to show that some people don't have the right focus. Don't focus on the damn music. Focus on the person you're having a conversation with. But anyways, they say they don't want donations, but they want a, a piece of land in Africa for black people to get away from the white man. Keep in mind, these are runners as well. So this is the mission that they want you to believe that they can achieve. They think that they're going to get a piece of land for free, apparently, from some African country. Like some African country, as poor as they are, they're going to say, hey, I, I bet you Mauritania will give you some land. All that fucking desert. See what you can do with that. You won't be able to survive. Algeria has a lot of land. But I'm sure if Algeria or Mauret Mauritania offered them some land, I bet you the first thing they'll say is, no, we're not going to take that because that's the occupier of Africa. We don't want to take that. 
but they won't take it because they look at a desert and they'll be like, God damn it, what can I do with it? That's why you see a lot of North African Saharan nations. That's why you see the populations are low. Because if they're mostly desert, nobody can live in the, in, in the area. Large countries, but low populations. And truth be told, you just never know what the hell is under that Sahara. All the uh, African civilizations from the past. Just never know. Africans are ill-equipped to even uncover it. And Northern Africa is occupied by foreign invaders. Turks posing as Arabs. Well, anyways, these guys have an impossible mission. And it's designed that way. Like I said, you look at most black organizations, black people who claim to be fighting for black people, they have the access to the money to at least get something going. They have organization. They have some manpower to get something in the works. But the only thing they're doing is trying to walk that fine line between you giving them more money and they're acting like they're trying to get something done but making sure that they hold themselves back so that they won't get anything done because they want to keep the money flowing. And they don't want to tell anybody where the money is going. So this is a pipe dream. You know, I'll be honest with you that taking over a state deal, that's more attainable than... Uh, go, yeah, that's right. I'm giving a compliment this time. <laughs> that's more attainable than uh, going to Africa, some foreign country in Africa with unstable governments with, I don't want to say dictators, but with leaders who just don't want to let go of power because they know the alternative in Africa is not good financially. So it's better to be the leader in the leadership of the country and control the economy. That's why third world nations never get over besides outside interference. So they want to build an African state. They want to build it in Africa. And they claim that they're not pan-Africanists sometimes. Whole lip <clears throat> schism. I'm going to find the video. I'm going to have to hunt it down. I probably should have saved it then. So my man <laughs> couldn't escape, but I'm going to have to hunt it down. Uh, when I went on his live stream... I asked him, when are you going to Africa? He said, I am not going to Africa. And I never said I was going to Africa. So again, just like people who claim to make, uh, want to take over a state, but don't want to move to the state, these people want to uh, stake a claim of land in Africa, but they don't have any plans on moving to Africa. They want long distance via Wi-Fi uh, organizations, man. I mean, this is... I mean, how can you say that you want an independent black African state for the diaspora in Africa? I don't know why it has to be for the diaspora if you're going to Africa. That doesn't make any sense. Like some African country or countries are really going to let you carve out some piece of land and say, hey, this is for you. Bullshit. Liberia was formed not by the damn slaves. It was formed by the white man. The white man said, we're taking this land. I'll admit, I didn't read into the pure history of it. I assume the British must have uh, had that part of the land and they must have, the, the U.S. must have asked them. Because, you know, the United States, they're not supposed to be colonists, but, you know, somehow they were able to get Liberia for some reason. But um, in a few other places like Puerto Rico, Guam and all these other places, Hawaii. And people who know the history of the U.S., you know, damn well, <laughs> past the Mississippi, you know, that was colonized gradually uh, out west. So. That, that's that's the first thing you have to examine. Is it is it a realistic goal? Once you establish that it's unrealistic, and you know that these guys have to know that it's unrealistic, these guys said that they graduated from colleges. So 
we're not dealing with stupid guys. Matter of fact, one guy, he said he was doing stem cell research. That, that was what he was doing in college. So, obviously, this guy can't be a dummy. So, the alternative is he's either retarded or he's a con man. And since he got through college uh, dealing with stem cell research, I'm going to take a guess that he's not retarded. So the only thing left right now is that he's a con man. As a matter of fact, if these guys are so into this, see, this is why they make this shit so complicated. Because they have tons of excuses as to why they're not doing what they claim to be doing. They want to say the BAIO is something different from Dynas, something different from Whole Lipism, something different from their other affiliates. And they're not going to Africa. And this guy, if he was dealing with stem cell research, see, this is the thing I was about to say. How come this guy doesn't take his skills and go help Africa? Isn't that what they make the videos about? How the black Americans can help Africans? This guy is supposed to be down with stem cell research. That, that's a very valuable to helping, up, helping the Africans. Go over there, tell the Africans, hey, man, invest this kind of money in this equipment. Let's get this popping. They don't want to do that because they're full of shit. That's why. But yet they keep making propaganda videos trying to tell African-Americans or black Americans, get your asses to Africa. Like I always say, lead by example. And you know, they had a lot of excuses. They said the guy who started Indonesia, he didn't, he didn't go there. The guy who started something else, he didn't go to, he didn't go there. <laughs> but they started it. Yeah. I don't recall King George of England ever coming to the United States. I, I, don't, I don't recall that. Uh, but King George had an empire. That's the difference. So, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you could use that excuse. I mean, where's your empire at? You cannot, if, unless you got people to go out and colonize the land for you, you got to take your ass there. And you and, and this is different. King George wasn't saying, hey, let me go colonize America, Australia. And I have to move there. Because I want you to move there. That wasn't his goal. His goal was, I want empire. Once we take the land, you people move there. And it becomes a part of the empire. These guys want to tell you all to move there. But they're not going with you. <laughs> uh, they keep trying to tell you the virtues of going to Africa and investing in Africa like we, we were all millionaires or something like that. But yet, these guys are like, you go there, you do it. I like the white man. I like the United States. I like where I'm at. I like my job. I like my money. I like my flat screen. I like my, my files. You know, uh, the, the can't miss the NFL. You know, got to go to the movies, got to do this, got to do that. I can get my white women, all that kind of stuff. I can't do that in Africa, you know. What sense does that make for somebody to try to convince you to go? So first of all, Mo, let's get, get this straight. Most black people are not going to Africa. 99.99% .99 of us are not going to Africa. And the ones they keep interviewing, again, look at these guys. Missing teeth, crack fiends. Clearly, they're going there to escape drug use and, and criminal histories. That's what they're going there for, detoxing or something. And one guy they had, he was in some backdrop trying to say he was rich. And I said, then the place is filthy. It looks like typical Africa. They paint concrete. Then they just let it roll. You know, it, it can get weathered down, dirty. And then they won't power wash it they won't wash nothing they just let it roll let it go to ruins that's one of the main problems with africa man they just let it go to ruins they don't upkeep the place that's the least you can do if people can't even upkeep the place what do you want to go there for and you're asking people from the ghetto who can't even upkeep the ghetto to go to another place that they can't upkeep <laughs> i mean that's a disaster waiting to happen I mean, and then you got the language barrier and then you got the cultural barriers. Africans, 
there's so many things I could tell you about that that I'm sure you already know about yourself. So these guys are full of shit. You know, then they uh they made the suggestion that uh I talk about their no donations only as if that was my whole point about these guys. That wasn't my whole point. My whole point was that they lie. The BAIO says that they don't accept donations, but then they do. And they didn't mention their man, Dynast, who keeps getting the super chats. They didn't even talk about super chat. See, here's the thing. It's one thing, like I said before, you got to take a while to set up your super chat. So that's a conscious decision saying that I want super chat donations. But what's even worse, which shows you more about what they're all about, is when they say they tell you to get the super chats up, get the likes up. Now you know what their motive is. You never heard me once say get the likes up. People get the likes up on my videos and thank you. But you know, number one, I don't even know the, the significance of it. <laughs> I know the significance of dislike, but. I don't know the significance of why people are so enthralled with getting likes up, especially when they go live. I notice get the likes up, get the likes up. They all say that. But when they command you to get the super chats up. Now, you know what their motives are. That's why they keep going live all the time. And when they go live, they're talking about the same thing over and over again. Same old propaganda uh, video about some broke down looking Negroes who moved to Africa and they don't look any wealthier than they probably looked when they were here. People move to places seeking opportunity. Black Americans are not going to spend all the money. Matter of fact, speaking of that, it's arguing with one of those damn idiots from that guy's crew. And I said, why don't you take your ass to Africa again? When it comes to these Pan-Africans, you just ask them simple questions and it blows everything up. Why don't you take your ass to Africa? He said, money is tight. <laughs> but I bet you money's not tight when you want that fried chicken dinner. Money's not tight when you want that PlayStation. See, what it is, is they know that that's not the place to be. And that's why they're never looking to move. But see, this is the thing. I get tired of these phonies. If you're going to be a Pan-Africanist, be one. They'll say Africa, Africa, Africa. And then you don't even want to step foot in the place because you know it's a shithole. And I'm just being honest. Africa, 2,500 to 3,000 years ago, looked better than Africa of today. And the main reason is because 3,000 years ago, it was a different world. The white man wasn't in control of nothing. The black man was in control. The black man was building things using the technology of the time. And the white man stole technology, started modifying things. Castles in Europe, those were built by black people. It's hard for you to understand it because you believe everything the white man tells you. Including the slavery thing. That is how it happened. And the numbers. Um, but once the white man took over, you had the, the industrial age. So that, that was a changing time. Because that moved things forward and people had to have the technology. To uh, progress in that world based on engines and oil. And electricity. That's what this world is built on and based on right now. Engine, oil, and electricity. You take away electricity or oil. Probably you can't take away electricity now. That's looks like that's uh, built in. But a lot of oil, a lot of electricity runs on oil. But once that oil goes, it's going to change the world again. So again... The world is built on those things. The modern world. Starting in the what? 1800s. Late 1800s. 
And the reason why a lot of other countries couldn't get on equal playing field with the white man is because the white man had colonized these countries. So he was in control of the governments. So these other people couldn't make a move without the white man watching. And the white man didn't share technologies with anybody other than his Germanic brothers. You know, Spain, Portugal, they may have gotten some technologies, you know, but they weren't in the long term plans. And the only reason why they even and that includes Italy, too, even though there was no Italy back in the 1800s. But um, early 1800s. Um, they weren't in long-term plans, but since they are in Europe, they kind of forced to work with them because of strategy. So, again, Africans 3,000 years ago looked better, carried themselves better. They were more in order. Yes, the white man and others who came in, they disrupted what the Africans had. And when you disrupt it, your whole society is disrupted. You end up looking like shit. Truth be told, man, you see uh, what happens when uh, people are victims of a war-torn society. That happens. And when African uh, countries got taken over by Rome or whatever, now the governments were under Roman control. Then when others came in and invaded, it was the Roman governments that had to do the fighting and they're the ones who got toppled and everybody else just fit, uh, fell in line with the invaders. So since Africa sucks now, Asians have been able to overcome things using science, math, and technology. Maybe that's seafood. Maybe there's something to that seafood with the brain power, but Africans beg others. They rely on others. Pan-Africans say, oh, well, Africa is the richest land on earth. Yeah, okay. But not by Africans. Uh, Africans don't know what to do with it. Even though I will admit, when you had Egypt, Nubia, and all these other civilizations, Africans did know what to do with it. They just don't know what to do with it now. So, these guys... <clears throat> Excuse me, these guys tried to say that all I did was talk about their donations, but that's what they want me to focus on, and that's what they want you to focus on, because that way, they don't have to address the real situation that I was talking about, which they didn't address it. All they did was do typical nigga fashion, talk shit, to get off the main topic. Now, they said that they're uh, only talking about vision. They put it out there and they said they'll let it do what it does. So they're African independent black state in Africa. That's just a vision. And you got to quote them on that. That's what they said. It's a vision. And I didn't hear anybody saying, no, nah, it ain't. It's more than a vision. So you want to give these guys money on a vision. And they're going to let everybody else sort the shit out. <laughs> that. I wrote these down, too, by the way, as I was watching their video, so I can go point for point of their bullshit. So if that's a vision, and they're not trying to make it a reality, that right there dismisses what they're all about. And I know they're listening, because they were listening before. So I'm giving you the opportunity to try and come up with some new lies. That's what I'm, I'm trying to do right now. But at the same time, I'm trying to shut down any future lies. Because I like to trap you in a corner. Like I said before, I always tell people, once I got you in a lie, I got you. It's all over with. So you can't really debate anything else. That, this is what I'm doing. I'm trapping you in a corner. So you're going to have to come up with some pretty sophisticated lies to get out of it. So they say... Uh, Another thing they do, and I, I made the video about this before, how Negroes, when things get serious, Negroes want to laugh, they want to joke, they want to name call. And that's what these guys did. Instead of addressing the issues directly, all they did was talk for a while and act like they were addressing issues, but they were not. 
they're really just talking about me and they didn't want to uh, mention names, but because they know once people listen to what I'm saying, they're going to be like, oh, shit, let me go over there. But all they do is laugh, joke, call people names. And I told you that was going to happen because I know these people. I've been watching these people for years. See, I, I didn't just jump on these people because I'm against red, black, and green. I didn't jump on these people because I don't like their style. I've been listening to them for years. I've been watching them for years. And I've been noticing the same theme. See, I analyze people for a while before I form an opinion. That's why you, you haven't really seen me form an opinion on Dane Calloway yet. See? And a few other people. And it took me a while with the Cynthia G, even though I didn't do an evaluation on her. But yeah, I, I made the assessment that she's another entertain, entertainer, YouTube entertainer. Same thing with Jason Black. And uh, that's the problem. We laugh, we joke, because to them it's entertainment. To some of us it's real. Because I'm tired of the joking. I'm tired of the Negro entertainment. I want the black American to get respect. I don't care about the others. Because they have their own cultures, their own ways, their own unions. So black people need to get serious instead of joking all the time. Now these guys, these BAIO people claim to be serious. If they're serious, why do they keep joking? When anybody challenges these guys, especially that whole lip sism, you notice how he's always calling people niggas. He's always saying, oh, do you like my eyes? I always take, you know, I always find it weird when guys, the first insult they come up with is some homosexual stuff. Then these same people will defend the homosexuals. I never said for one time in my life as a first insult, not even as a second one. I never told a man to suck my dick. Never told a man that in my life. Never told a man to kiss my ass. Never did anything that even went around gay stuff. Never said none of that. But so many, so many people do, and when they do, usually that means that's what's on their mind. And I'm not trying to be funny, but usually, I mean, you can't deny that. You know, it's like if you're talking about something else and then they start talking about weed. They'll admit, hey, I smoke weed. But nobody's going to admit, hey, I suck a dick. They're not going to admit that. But they'll do other things, make jokes. I'm just saying. Black people need to get serious. And that's why I'm calling these phony groups out. So we can eliminate the bullshit artists. Eliminate the conners. If they want to get paid... Like I said, there are other ways to get paid on YouTube. You don't have to keep trying to con black people out of hopes and dreams. Number one, black people are not going to Africa. And again, as a matter of fact, since you guys are listening, ask us, matter of fact, tell us, how come you keep trying to convince the black American to go to Africa? There are other black people. You keep mentioning diaspora. How come you bastards, and that's what I'm calling you, how come you're not in Brazil? How come you're not in Canada? How come you're not in the Caribbean? Or anywhere else in the Americas or any place else in the world? Trying to tell black people to go to Africa. Why the constant focus on black America? That's the question. And I'd like an answer. But I'm sure you won't answer. Because if you answer... <laughs> The answer is going to tell us a whole lot. Again, again, this is the same con job with Marcus Garvey. He came to the United States to try to convince us to leave. While his Jamaicans kept coming and keep coming. We know the routine. We know Jamaicans. You know, the Caribbeans and even Africans, they come here. Who do they come to first? If they can't use the white, fat white woman. They go to the black American woman. They pay us to marry these people so they can stay in this country. And I know this because my sister did that. 
which I thought was stupid, co-workers I had in the past that were Africans, they tried to get me to do that. But their price was too low for me. I'm going to be honest with you. And that was after the 9-11 thing. And Nigeria was on that terror watch list. So I said, I ain't trying to get involved with that. Because I don't know what their motives are. As far as I was concerned, 5000 wasn't enough. You want to be in America that bad? And they said I wasn't getting no sex. I said, oh, hell, you got to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got, I'm not marrying some woman and, and I'm not getting something. I didn't even see the woman, number one. But number two, first of all, I'm sure she probably would have said, hey, let's do it. But the price was too low. If you want, so they befriend you. That's what I noticed. I, maybe some of you have noticed this too. Now, in this case, it's primarily the Africans as opposed to the Caribbeans, but the Caribbeans do it too. But the Africans, they'll befriend you for years. Act like they're black and cool down with blackness when it suits them. But you see their actions when they're around white people. That's, that's why, how I judge people. Are they grinning, showing their teeth, fucking their eyes, kissing ass? Yes, they are. Then when they're around you, they're trying to use you. So their people can gain entry into the United States because they think that you are wanting a connection with a people that you have no connection with. But once they get their people in here, they don't care about you. They'll promptly divorce you after a couple of years. And that's that. And if they're really slick, they'll take half of your shit, too, in the divorce. That's what people never factor in, too, you know. But you got to watch that depending on what country these people come from, because that means the, the government might start watching you, even if you're not doing nothing. But you never know those people that you marry for that money. They might be up to something. You just never know. But they use us. And then once they're done with us, they're no longer involved with us. This is what they do. And, and they do it in a way, even if these Africans are getting a lot of money. They'll pull their money together because I knew a lot of Africans, they had a lot of money, but they want to offer me a measly $5,000. You know, if your cousins or whatever, you want them in here that bad, number one, if you're in here, what's the problem? How come they can't come? And again, this goes back to the original issue. If Africa is so great, how come these Africans come here? Then they do everything possible to bring the rest of the family here. <laughs> I mean, and then they keep trying to tell us, oh, Africa, our culture is this, our culture is that. Uh, the country's so beautiful, beautiful, but it's poor, it's beautiful. But yet they keep coming here. They don't want to go back. They don't want to look back. But these con artists, and I'm talking to you, whole lip ism, sism, crazy ass names, <laughs> B A I O. I'm talking to you people. Dynast, why do you want us to go to Africa if the Africans don't want to go? They don't want to stay there, and that's where they're from. And the white man accepts a lot of Africans. They'll move into the whitest areas of the country. And for some reason, white people just won't touch them. But let one of us move into some lily white area. They're all over, like, man, what the hell is this person doing here? Ask you all kinds of questions. So, you know, this is what these guys are all about, man. They're frauds and they're phonies. And I, after a while, you watch them, you get to their main point. Some people get slick and they don't really tell you what the main point is. They kind of keep talking about everything else. And make you assume or presume what the main point is. By the title of their crew or what they keep talking about. For instance, the Israelites. Their main point. See, this is why all the videos you watch on all these groups. You know, they might be exciting and, and fun to watch. And after a while, you're like, oh man, these guys seem serious. But the Israelites' main 
goal, their end point is to do nothing but wait for Jesus to come back and let him take care of everything. That is the main goal. <laughs> you know what that means, right? That means that all this talking, all of this congregation is for nothing. Because the end goal is to wait on a man that hasn't been seen in 2018 years, if at all. And it's crazy how people keep falling for the con game. Think about the state of the world 2018 years ago. Roman Empire was still around. <laughs> you still had uh, the Greeks still around. But, and you can still have the, the ancient Egyptian, uh, the, the, the main remnants that you can go in and, and check out, investigate, see them walking around, hear them speaking their language. They were still around. Even though they weren't in control of their country. Carthage was around. I mean, it's just crazy. France, UK, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Italy. They were not around. Russia, they were not around. It's crazy. Different state of the world. But throughout the 2000 years, people have been debating back and forth, believing that the man is coming. How many songs have you heard? He's coming back like I knew he would. <laughs> that was a good song, but nobody knew he would because he hasn't come back yet. After 2018 years, hell, after two years, you should, you should start saying, this man left this high and dry. So the Israelites, that's what they're doing, waiting for Jesus to come back. So they talk mean, they sound mean, but in the end, they're not going to do anything. Same thing with the nation of Islam. They sound mean, they talk mean, but at the end of the day, they want their own land. Doesn't that sound familiar? Marcus Garvey, it's all, it all stems from that. They want their own land, but here's the kicker. They're not going to go out and buy their own land. Elijah Muhammad did buy land. But what they want is the white man to give them the land. The land. So <laughs> that's the kicker. People don't realize that. They want the white man to give them the land. So, obviously, that's never going to happen. So that keeps them walking that fine line between donations and their mission. That's what, what you have to do is when you look at groups, look at their mission statement and their end game. That's what you got to look at. Ask them what is the end goal. And if they can't answer, something's up. And if the end goal is not attainable then you know they're full of shit. If the Israelites went around telling people the end goal is to wait for Jesus, people are going to dismiss it. Because what's the point in arguing with people about the Bible and saying, hey, if you don't repent, you're going to die. We can end that because we're all going to die anyways. So, what's the point? Nation of Islam. America will be destroyed. You get down with the nation of Islam, you will be spared. The same old cult tactics. Rinse and repeat. That's all it is. But, was Elijah Muhammad spared? Was Malcolm X spared? Matter of fact, has America been destroyed? Now, I'm sure there are people out here trying to destroy it, but it hasn't been destroyed. So again, the end game is what you got to look at. These, this BAIO, their end game is unrealistic. 
The end game is they want to build an Afri- independent, I'm sorry, an independent black state for the diaspora in Africa. Not in America, not more realistically in the Caribbean, but in Africa. Then what? Nothing. If Caribbeans were so pan African, matter of fact, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't. I don't even recall hearing that Africans even want to move to the Caribbean. They want to. They're not trying to move to that shit hole because they're like, God damn, I might as well stay where I'm at if I got to move to the Caribbean. They want to move to the white man's countries. And that's the bottom line. You can't deny it. You can call me a hater. You can call me an anti-African, which I'm not anti-African. I'm just anti-African for us. That's what I am. I mean, if this is a Caribbean thing, deal with them. Don't deal with nobody else. Don't deal with us. Stop bothering us. Oh, yeah. And for my sister, Renee, I had to communicate to you. Uh, I might do that. In the, let me see what the time is. Yeah, 46 minutes. Yeah, I'm not going to go deep into that. But, you know, I kind of wrote you and let you know what the deal was. The truth is, when you examine the facts, not the, 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 the hype job, not the performance, the evidence is just not there to show that we came from Africa. It's just not there. The only thing we're going by are the stories that the white man told us. And I tell people this all the time. If you don't believe the white man on one thing, and he's supposed to be a liar and a racist and a white supremacist, why do you believe him when he's telling you about your history? And keep in mind, he is the only one telling you about this history and his coons that he uh, put out there. You don't know about this history and wouldn't know about it unless the white man uh, told you about it. My mother made me watch Roots. Why? Because the white man told her (laughs) this is what uh, this is our history. And a lot of people with Roots, they thought, oh, that's that sums it up. That's our that's our history. Doesn't make sense. We've all said to ourselves, listen, with all the slaves out there, how did they so few capture so many? Capturing people, whether they're scared or not, and turning them into slaves, that's a lot harder to do than taking over a country by surprise and then making people slaves. Why? Because the people don't really have anywhere to go. But when you come into their country and you want to take them and transport them somewhere, even the weak ones, the scared to death ones are going to be resistant to that. And after a while, everybody's going to be like, hey, man, let's stop these guys. You're not going to have five guys that come in and say, hey, man, I'm taking me 2000 slaves. Now, of course, in warfare, we've had the uh, warriors go at it with each other. And then, you know, you had POWs who got turned into slaves back in the Egyptian days. But that's after a beatdown. You know, when you see people getting killed, brains getting busted out and all that kind of stuff. And then your numbers start dwindling and you realize it. Oh, man, we can't win. Then you start giving up. Then you prefer to be a slave than be killed. Those are the scared, the extremely scared and the, the military. So there's nobody else coming to your rescue after that. So. I don't want to prolong that, but, you know, maybe I'll do a follow up, but watch my other videos uh, on that. And maybe, you know, I still come back on your show, but I just can't catch the day, the days, man. Sometimes it's like, okay, I thought it was Tuesdays or Thursdays and it's not on. So you got to keep a set day so (laughs) so I can come on. Unlike others, I can explain myself to the fullest, but um. You know, I'm not just making a claim just to make it. I made it 
And I'm sure all of us have thought about this at some point in time when we were little kids. Because I know I have. I'm picturing it right now in the second, third grade in the library. Uh, medieval paintings from Europe. Of the monarchy and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm sure we've all noticed. Man, how come there's always black people in the background? And how come some of the monarchy or the people in the paintings, the Europeans in the mediev medieval times, look kind of black? In some way, form, or uh, uh, fashion, or their hair is kind of black in a black type of hairstyle, even if it's red. We start thinking these things, even though we don't know the, what's going on behind it. But even as a child, you know, you start saying, hey, man, something's not right. Same thing with the slavery. You know, you're like, damn, that's what the white man did, huh? Took us as slaves. Because that's what they keep beating into our heads. Slavery, slavery, slavery. And then, I'm sure we all said, damn, so, so few Europeans took so many Africans all over the place. It makes no sense. And the same Pan-Africanists and everybody else, they see, this is what the numbers I use. The W.E.B. Dubois, I use his numbers. And the reason why I use him is because he was Boule and he was a Pan-Africanist. That's why I use his numbers. Because then that way, none of those opposition Negroes can dispute the numbers. Because that's their man. And that's what happens. That's how you trap people. You back them into a corner. Then they have to say, okay, okay, I got to go with that. <laughs> because they know they're going to get busted in a lie. So, anyways, these BAIO guys, they just got backed into a corner. And once I put the screenshot up of their them accepting their donations, I'll catch them in a lie. And you can see it for yourselves, and they can see it for themselves. And watch them make plenty of excuses. Oh, I got to keep the website up. That's what I have to do. That costs money. Oh, I thought you weren't accepting donations. Whatever the excuse is, you are accepting donations. But yet, that's the first thing these people accuse me of, is accepting donations. They try to act like they're above others by saying the B-A-I-O. Not each person accepts donations. And I got news for you. I didn't even check the B-A-I-O website yet. So <laughs> let me see a donation link on that. But this is 52 minutes going on 53. So I'm going to cut this short right now. And uh, B-A-I-O, whole lip schism. I didn't attack you because I don't like you. I attack you because you're trying to trick our people for the white man. See, we're putting all the, the connections together on you Pan-Africanists, you red, black, and green people. The dots are being connected. We're seeing who you are. We're seeing what your themes are. We're seeing what your motives are. And pretty soon, we're going to let it be known who your masters are. And we already know who your masters are. The connection is going to be made clearly. And we already, uh, I'm sure most of the people who watch me, they already know any, any damn way. They know. But in time, we're going to go there. But I'm trying to get into another topic, but these topics keep coming back up. But I'll end it right here.